And to, in the NBA today, there are many superstars in the league that are literally the youngest players in the NBA, but they're also rising to their high education. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about top 15 current NBA players, really NBA stars that are under the age 25. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Will. We're back again with another video. And in today's NBA, there have been many current NBA players that just very young but very talented already becoming trying to become the best players in the nba today so i made my own top 15 list there will be one honorable mention in this list and also i will be showing the stats on the screen there's a disclaimer some players on this list are just had their birthday just turned 25 you know the list i just made is was updated in march 2021 so some players on this list they just turned 25 now before we get into this video, if y'all like basketball content, y'all love watching basketball plays, basketball highlights, and just pure basketball content, please check out my channel. Please subscribe. Also, like the videos and check out my podcast, Will, Ch Will Chill. I appreciate y'all for the support. Now, before we get that further ado, let's talk about the honorable mention. The honorable mention we got is Shea Gillis Alexander. Now, Shea Gillis is very talented. He's a young, up becoming star. And he got a great mid range. He got good, good solid handles. He, he, he can get to the basket, get to the free throw line. He's very efficient. Problem with he, him is, I believe he's inconsistent at times. And I believe he need, he need to learn how to be more of a playmaker and more of a, probably a fourth general, especially on OKC Thunder, because OKC literally has nothing but draft picks on that team. So I think Shea needs to learn how to play in that kind of role for him to be better than these 15 players I have on this list. So he's my honorable mention on this list. Number 15, the rookie of the year, Lamelo Ball. Coming into the league, I did not think Lamelo was gonna be this good. I thought he was gonna be good, better than his brother Alonzo, but Lamelo is already looking like he's gonna be the next upcoming thing because his playmaking ability is unbelievable. He has he's a great passer. He actually can shoot better than his bro, even though Alonzo has definitely improved his shooting. He can get to the basket at will. He's very he's already a leader on the court, on and off the court. The way he was able to get injured. In the season, thought he was going to be out for the season and still come back for the rest of the games to try to make a run for the playoff spot and still put up a decent amount of numbers. About 15 points, 8, 10 assists a game, 5 rebounds, and shooting 39% from 3 in his rookie season. That's impressive. That's why he's number 15 on the list, but he's still not better than the top 14 players. Number 14, we got DeMontis Sabonis. Sabonis is just a solid big man. That gets no recognition whatsoever. The most underrated big man we have in the league probably today. He can play. He he he's great at playing back to the basket. He got great footwork. Great. He he got great mid range game. And he's just very consistent. He'll put up 20, 10 a night. Sometimes he put up 30, 30, 10 games. He 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 got he can pass for a big man also. The problem with him is he needs to improve his defense and. He, I need to see him what he does in the playoffs. I need to see if he can he can carry his, this Indiana team to a playoff spot because Indiana is not a bad team. They just culture wise is, is not good right now because they keep changing coaches and they losing one of their, they lost one of the biggest stars even though it's injury prone and a bit the Old Depot and they just need a pure point guard. So Sabonis, so you you've been doing your thing lately. Is one of the most underrated big men in the league. I just need to see you in the playoffs. Now, number 13 is going to be, it might be controversial for this one. I got Brandon Ingram. Here's why. Brandon Ingram, we know how talented he is. We know he's he, he has potential to be like the next Kevin Durant. His ability, to his, his length, his girth, his ability to shoot, his ability to get to the free throw line, his ability to have... A, a, a nice bag, nice handles, 
and just have a solid mid-range game. The problem here is he's getting outshadowed by Zion Williamson now. His role is not as is not as great now because Zion Williams is literally taking over as the number one star, number one option on the New Orleans Pelicans. So, so Brandon Ingram, the fact that he's being consistent is not consistent enough because he's getting outshadowed by Zion Williamson. That's why he's lower on my list because these players up on my list, they they carrying their team to the next level. With Brandon Ingram, he's put up stats, but the team is not developing wins. And a lot of that has to do with his role because Zion Williamson is outshouting him right now. So that's why he's number 13 on my list. Number 12, we got De'Aaron Fox. Another player that has been so outshadowed, but one of the most underrated guards in the NBA. He's literally had his be his career season this year. He literally was balling out of his mind. Again, the problem is he cannot get this Sacramento Kings to the playoffs. He's doing all he can. It's not his fault. He he's the quickest player in the NBA. He's literally John Wall 2.0. Might be better, become better than John Wall. But probably already is better than John Wall. But... He needs to prove his shooting, which he has a little bit, but he needs to prove his shooting a little more. Get outside the three-point line, prove that better. Get to the free throw line more. He's been attacking a lot. He's been attacking the basket a lot better. But I think they, De'Aaron Fox needs more help. And I believe players above him just not just are just already better than him. Now, number eleven on my list, we got the young bull, John Morant. John Morant again. That's that's. The next Russell Westbrook, just the most athletic guard in the league, other than Westbrook, the most you know unique person, unique guard in the league, also because what he did in the play-in and in the, in, the, in the first round of playoffs was spectacular. It shocked me. I kind of knew he had in him, but not like that. Darren, I mean, John Morant is the real deal. Now again, he needs to improve in his shooting a little more, but. His ability to galvanize his team, to lead his team to the playoffs, and it's only the second season in the league. His ability to be most of the athletic guard, to do acrobat layups every night, be able to pass. He can do it all. He's an improvement shooting. That's why he's number 11 on my list. Number 10, we got Bam out of bio. Now, I got a lot to say about Bam because Bam is probably the best defensive big man on this list bam can literally defend at a high level he block shots left and right his problem is even though he he's good at playing with his back in the to the basket it's his total offensive game is very inconsistent he needs to learn how to play more to his back to the basket instead of trying to Rely on mid-range jump shots, which he's not there yet. He needs to improve from his mid-range, improving his free throw shooting, and learn how to shoot f from three. Especially as a big man, that would be very valuable to the Miami Heat. Especially with the pick of a Kyle Lowry, that would bring more spacing with Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson coming in the game. They'll be more lethal if Bam went and learns how to play with his back to the basket. Because they'll be double teaming him more. Because he'll be more dominant. But I believe Bam is still better than Demontis Sabonis because I seen Bam in the bubble. I seen how dominant he was. He was playing like a prime young Bam out of bio that I never seen. He was unbelievable. This year he slapped a little bit. I think he needs to get back to his game and prove his mid range and prove his improve his three-point shooting but also play more to his back to the basket and he will be one of the best big men in the league now number nine on my list the most disappointed most disappointing player in, in, in the nba today ben simmons all right ben simmons we know the potential he has one of the best playmakers in the game probably the probably top three defensive player in the game just dominant getting to the paint but his mental is messed up. His mental is holding him back. It's not even just him shooting, just him shooting a jump shot. It's just him attacking. It is him trying to get to the back, at least get something. We saw what terrible he was in the playoffs, especially versus Atlanta Hawks. 
in the fourth quarter. Zero points in four games. That's unacceptable. I don't care how great you are, how talented, how much potential you have. They call him saying he is the next LeBron if he actually gets a jump shot. I don't care. You need to get your mental right. Because if they if if Philadelphia decides to keep you, the fans are not gonna like that. Because how scared you are at the moment. Ben Simmons, just please stay in the lab. We somebody needs to lock the doors, lock everything in the gym, and you just work on your jump shot, just work on your mental, just work on your free throw shooting, work work on all of that before you can be better than these top eight players on this list. Now, number eight on half of my list, Jamal Murray. Now, Jamal Murray tore his ACL. I hope he comes back fully healthy. But when he does, Denver Nuggets are going to be a problem in the West because we saw what he did in the bubble. Just a young sniper, a young Brandon Roy sniper. His ability to shoot, his ability to just tap the basket, Great, you know, he got a little, like, a small bag on him that he can step back, shoot on you. He's he's athletic for his size, great free throw shooter, and he's an underrated playmaker at times with Jokic on the floor. And he's only 24. Jamal Murray, I hope you come back fully healthy because Denver is going to be a problem. That's why you're number eight on my list. Now, number seven on half on my list, we got Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown's another player that got hurt in the season. Jalen Brown's one of the most underrated two-way players we have in the game. I'm glad he got his his money because him and Jason Tim were a problem. The Boston Celtics need, just need a pure point guard. This is a pure four general for them too. Jalen Brown, very athletic. He can defend at a very high level. He's proofing his shooting game. He's efficient. And get to the free throw line. Just need to prove his free throw shooting a little bit. But he really can do it all. That's why Jalen Brown is literally number seven on my list. Because his consistency and his ability to defend at a high level, his athleticism, he just he's just improved his game every single year. And he's going to improve even more. Now, number six on my list. Just a young, fearless dog. Trey Young. I'm so proud of this, brother. Trey Young, you, do y'all see the, what he did in the playoffs? Did y'all did y'all witness greatness what he did in the playoffs? He just fearless. It's not it's not really his shooting. It's not just his great four general playmaking that he has. His ability to, to get to the free throw line with ease because he's such a miniature bull. His ability to draw fouls like crazy. He has ninety nine overall drawing fouls ability. Great playmaking. This is a great four general. He can shoot out of the parking lot. And he galvanized the whole team. He's just a leader. And he's going to continue to get better. If he gets his efficiency from three better, it's his lights out for the lead. Trey Young's a problem. That's why he's number six on the list. He's only 22. So that's, that's a crazy thing. Number five, Zion Williamson. Zion. His ability, he's just dominant. He's just dominant. The most efficient player in the NBA, in my opinion. His ability to play to, with his back to the basket, just unstoppable in the paint. 100% field goal percentage in the paint. Layups on 100. Dunks on probably 97. Obviously, he needs to prove on being more of a playmaker for the Pelicans and get them to Ws instead of just losses with just great stats because he's averaged 27 points in the second season. But, but it's outshadowed. It's overshadowed because of the Pelicans' record. It doesn't matter if you don't get Ws. Zion needs to learn how to galvanize his team, and he's tucking, he's taking that number one option on his team over Brandon Ingram. We know what he can, we has potential of. He needs to learn to shoot better, get to, uh, shoot better free throws, and be a more of a playmaker and be a little better defensive player. Not just blocking shots, but outside perimeter defense needs to be a little more better. That's why I was number five on my list. Now, number four on my list, this is just a young, slashing, 
Hank Slingy Slasher, Flasher, Donovan Mitchell. He's probably the most athletic person on this list. He can shoot. He can get to the basket. He's fearless. He's streaky. He's not, again, not afraid. He, he wants the moment. Again, Utah needs to do a better job of building around him a little better. Because he's doing all he's can, he can, but it's really the rest of the team. Rudy Gobert is not the best, in my opinion. I think Rudy Gobert, in my opinion, is a little overrated. But Donovan Mitchell, they call him D-Wade 2.0 for a reason. Because as quick as he, as quick as he is, great dunking ability, just the most athletic person on this list, great free throw shooter, and a better three-point shooter. So that's why he's number four on my list. Now, number three, we got Devin Booker, young Kobe. You see where he got this Phoenix Suns to uh, the NBA Finals. Oh, he's only 24, ladies and gentlemen. He's only 24. He might have turned 25, but he's, I believe he's 24. Um, Devin Booker literally just, he got, he almost got the whole package. Not the whole package, but he got the fadeaway, he got a Duffy in him. Jump shot is just pure. Get to the free throw line. His playmaking ability got a lot better. He's just a scoring sniper. Chris Paul was a perfect teammate for Devin Booker. That's why they get made to the NBA Finals. And they might even be better in next year. We'll see. Everybody said healthy, but Devin Booker is going to get even better. But I got this player better than him. I'm going to explain why I got this player better than Devin Booker. Number two is Jason Tatum. Listen, Jason Tatum is just pure, most probably the most smooth NBA player, other than Kevin Durant. Most smooth player I've seen in a minute. His step back game is pure, it's unique. He His post moves is just one of the best in the NBA. He's one of the most athletic players. And the biggest reason why he's the better than Devin Booker, he can defend at a high level. Devin Booker has improved defensively a little bit, but Jason Tatum came in as a pure defender. Defending at a high level. His ability to get players back to the basket and have great footwork post moves, improve his three-point shooting, get to the free throw line, average probably, I think he averaged 26 points per game this year. He's going to get even better. He's going to be one of the best. He's already one of the best players in the league, but he's going to be a, definitely a top five, top three player probably next year or the, or the years coming after that because he's literally unstoppable now. He has he had many 50-point games this year, and he's going to continue to get better. They just need – Boston just need a point guard for him to facilitate. I believe if Jason, you put Jason Tatum on Phoenix, they would have went to the finals also. Him with Chris Paul, lethal. It'll be the same. It'll be the same result, in my opinion. But he's better than Devin Booker because one, he has a better Duffy back, in my opinion, than Devin Booker. Two, he's more athletic, and three, he can defend a high level. So that's why he's number two. Now, number one overall, I think this is really obvious. Like, come on, it's just, this is obvious. He's, he's literally James Harden, but he even he even proves in the playoffs. Luka Doncic, Luka. Now, obviously, Luka needs help. Luka needs a lot of help. Porzingis needs to be gone. They need a point guard. They need they need they need a lot of things. They need a two way player. They just need a lot of things. Luka, he puts up the stats. He's unguardable. Step back game, unstoppable. His ability to just dance on people, get to the basket, solid three point shot. Just need to be more efficient. And obviously, he needs to learn to play defense sometimes. But in my opinion, he's just the best player in this list. He's the most consistent. He's always going to be an MVP candidate. He just needs help. He's only 22, 20, 22 or 23. Luka is just unbelievable. We know what we know what kind of game and dominance Luka has. Pulling up a sturdy 10 and 12, averaging 28, 8 and 12. We know Luka, what Luka is. 
So that is my top 15 current players under 25 list. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions. And comment down below which video I should react I should do next. Also, all of these about 10 of these players have a lot in common. They all could be compared to the modern NBA players in the league. Like LeBron, like Kobe back in the day, like, you know, T-Mac. All, all the greats. Like James Harden now. All, all these greats. They all compared to these players. And if you all want to see a video like that, click this video right here. I did a video and compare all these players to the modern NBA players. And I appreciate y'all tuning in. It's been your boy Will, and I'm out.